Hey, it's Jeff from Million Plants. Welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I wanted to repot my massive jade plant. Uh, this thing is about 11 or 12 years old. It's the one that I've owned the longest. So uh, one of my original plants, I did have a jade plant before this one, but probably like most of you, uh, I overwatered it and killed it. So this was the replacement plant that I bought. So it's done really, really well. I have not repotted it for probably about three years. And I noticed that the soil is pretty compact. It's pretty solid. So it's not really absorbing any of the water that uh, I give it anymore. I noticed some of the leaves on some of the branches are starting to uh, shrivel up even after I water it. It's still bone dry, so I know the soil is not retaining any moisture anymore. So I'm gonna take it out of this pot and put it in a larger terracotta pot. And uh, yeah, it should be uh, probably a little bit of a difficult process as it's quite large, but I will kind of run you through it and we'll see what happens. So overall, this plant is still really, really healthy. If you look at uh, some of these uh, nice darker green leaves, when you squeeze them, they should not fold or kind of, uh, I guess, crumple. They should stay nice and firm if it's uh, well watered. But I'll show you back here. There is a couple leaves that are starting to lose their darker green color. And you can see it's pretty easy to kind of fold and squeeze. So I'm having, I guess, some issues with a few of the leaves uh, similar to these ones, basically just dropping. And I'll show you another thing that uh, leads me to believe this thing needs to be repotted. I can literally move the plant in this soil and it is absolutely bone dry. So I just watered it the other day. It's like concrete. It's very hard very compact, so that, uh, like I said, is leading me to believe that uh, the water is not able to penetrate into the soil into, and uh, down into the roots. One of the things that is gonna be a little bit of a problem for me is you can see the shape of the pot. Uh, if it was just a nice kind of regular terracotta, uh, almost like a V-shaped pot, you can just literally pull it out, but some of the soil is obviously gonna be a little bit uh, kind of bulging on the side, so it's gonna be a little difficult to just pull this uh, plant out of the pot. Sometimes Sometimes if these plants are too large, it might be just easier to take a hammer and just smash the pot. But I do want to save this one and I think I can get it out of the pot. I just have to kind of chip along the soil basically at the sides. I do have a little knife I'm going to kind of chisel away. I'm not too worried about damaging any roots on the side as this will kind of regrow once I put it in a larger pot. So I wanted to show this here quick. You can see just the tiniest little new leaves starting. So that was one of my worries about repotting this basically in the fall slash beginning of winter is that when you repot a plant, you want uh, root growth so that it doesn't basically go into plant shock. So that was kind of my biggest worry, but uh, seeing these new smaller leaves actually kind of reassures me. And uh, I know this plant will probably do fairly well uh, when I repot it here. Okay, I don't recommend doing this, but my plan was to grab basically two, um, I guess, thicker stems and just, I don't know if you can see it, pull it out of the pot, but it is being held up by some uh, dirt on the side. So I'm going to take my little butter knife here and just see if I can chip away at the sides and I'm loosening up some of the soil. And then hopefully I can just pull it out uh, through, I guess, the pot without uh, actually having to break it. Uh, I would advise against pulling any plant out of a pot by its stems. The reason is you can damage, obviously, the stem, any of the branches, but more importantly, some of the smaller roots down in the pot. So uh, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I just kind of learn things as I go. And, uh, but I do know um, or I would advise against pulling a plant out uh, by its stem. So do the best that you can to, I guess, squeeze the pot, smack the pot, whatever you have to, to get it out of uh, the, its container without damaging its roots and stuff. So I'm just gonna go around the edges here as far down as, I know I'm already chopping up some roots, I can, I can feel it, but just do the best that you can, or I'm gonna do the best that I can just to kind of loosen up the soil around the pot here. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of work around the sides and then I'm just going to, again, lightly pull up. Ooh, shouldn't have done that one. I felt a little kind of snapping. Okay, uh, I'm going to <laughs> chop that up a little bit better. I could feel uh, some roots pulling, so I'm going to really chop it up. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole extended process, but um, once I get it out, I'll show you how the roots look. Okay, I think it's pretty well ready to come out. You can see it's pretty loose. Just kind of pull it up here. Here's a little ladybug. There you go, perfect. 
My kids brought in some ladybugs this summer, and there he is right there. Where'd he go? He's up there. Still finding them around my plants every once in a while. <laughs> my little plant protectors. There he goes. Where are you going, little guy? So here is what the roots look like. You can see the soil is absolutely bone dry. It's rock hard. Also made a rookie mistake. So when I had this, like I said, uh, repotted about three years ago, before I knew any better, I put rocks in the bottom of my soil. This is a beginner move. Um, I did make a video about basically not using rocks at the bottom of the pot. So if you wanna go check out that video, I'll leave the link up here somewhere. Anytime you have like a succulent or cactus or something like that, well, mainly with any house plant, don't use rocks at the bottom of a pot. You may think it helps with drainage, but it doesn't. It actually just basically uh, holds on to more water in the lower portion of the soil. So you think it all drains out, but it doesn't. It sits in the soil, so don't do it. Okay, I'm gonna show you the new pot that I'm gonna put it in and basically just the size difference. Here's my larger terracotta. It is the same diameter. Um, they are both 12 inch pots, but you can see how much deeper this one is so it will allow the roots to search out further down allowing for more i guess plant growth i'm hoping to get this basically as tall and as large as i can i've pruned this many times over the years um, i did not do a very good job of picking my pruning locations it was pretty scary to prune it for the first time but it was uh, such a learning experience. I took a number of cuttings from this plant, gave it away to some friends. I made some other uh, pots for myself and my kids also uh, planted a couple for themselves as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is size this plant up in this new pot. So obviously I know I'm gonna have to add some soil at the bottom of the pot, but I just wanna see if the overall circumference is uh, is the same or if I have to add much soil on the sides. So again, I'm just gonna lift it up. It should be a good fit. Actually, it's a little bit wider than the other pot. You can't even see me in this. So um, I'm gonna have to add probably about half the pot of soil and I'm going to be using just a cactus succulent mix, maybe a little bit extra perlite in there just so that the soil stays kind of I guess airy and uh, not so compact as it is with this one. Okay, so I have my uh, cactus succulent mix that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna pour it in there in a second, but I just wanna show uh, at the bottom of this, this pot's huge. There is a drain hole right here. Sometimes you can use a plastic mesh, but I like to use just a single small stone. Just put it right over top of the drain hole. That prevents any soil from falling out when you do water it. Okay, so I'm simply just going to pour this in, probably gonna use, I'm assuming at least a bag and a half. I have two bags here. Uh, it's a lot of soil. Okay, that should be pretty good actually. So something must be a little uneven because it's wanting to uh, fall to one side here. I don't even know why I'm doing it like this, but okay. So I'm gonna do my best. This thing is just absolutely huge. So um, because it's wanting to lean to this side over here, I'm going to put some soil on this side here first. And just gonna drop that in. Hopefully it seats it properly. Make sure it's in the middle. I'm gonna have to add a lot of soil basically to the sides to fill in the gaps. So just use, um, I just use this little nursery cup and I'm just filling in the sides. So, I'm going to kind of look this plant over, make sure it's uh, seated properly, make sure it's not leaning to one side too far, and then I'm simply just going to fill in the soil around the sides. If you happen to knock off a couple leaves or stems during the repotting process, all you would do is literally just put that leaf back right back in the soil. Don't water it, don't do anything. It will start to grow some roots. I have some other, I guess, videos on propagating jade plants from single leaf and stem cuttings. Go check it out if you are interested. So I guess I can talk about care for jades as well. I would only recommend any succulent, uh, cactus, anything like that. Uh, jades are a succulent. I would only recommend them if you have a bright sunny area. I have all of my jades in my south facing windows and they get full light. Uh, basically throughout the summer and winter months. Um, as you can see, they still do grow in the winter months. Uh, but if you have kind of like a, an area where it's a little bit more on the darker side, or if you don't have access close to a bright window, I would not recommend 
owning a jade or a succulent unless you have uh, maybe a grow light, but I don't have much experience with uh, succulents and grow lights, so I can't really speak too much for that. Uh, the other thing that is absolutely important for succulents is its watering routine. Do not overwater a succulent. Um, it is very susceptible to root rot. It does not tolerate sitting in wet soil for very long. That's why in most of my videos, you will see me using terracotta. These are quite porous. They absorb uh, any soil moisture lower in the pot and help evaporate, uh, controlling the, I guess, dampness or moistness of soil down in the pot, which is what um, will lead to root rot. Watering, I guess, depends on the type of light that it gets. Uh, this one sits right in my south facing window. Uh, through the summer, I might have to water it once every two weeks. If you take these outside, it's probably going to be a little bit more, maybe like a weekly watering, just due to kind of the outside heat and sunlight tends to dry out the soil a little bit faster. But for indoors in summer, uh, like I said, I'll probably have to water maybe once every two weeks. The watering routine for the winter is a little bit different. Even though mine is in the bright sunny south window, um, I will probably on average, maybe water this once a month. So it's not very frequent. So even if the soil is dry and you watered it maybe like a week prior in the winter months, uh, just let it dry out. Pay attention to the leaves. If they are firm like this and you can't fold them, it does not need water. If the majority of the leaves are like the ones I showed earlier where they're quite, like, uh, quite squishy and um, I guess, you can bend them. That probably means it needs a good soaking and don't be afraid to give it a lot of water. Just the frequency of water might be a little bit less. Give it a good soaking, but let it dry out completely. Like I said, in the winter, maybe once a month, throughout the summer, indoors, maybe once every two weeks. And again, depending on the pot size as well. Some of the smaller pots that I have um, through the winter, Oh man, this is starting to be a little bit of a confusing topic. <laughs> the larger the pot, the less frequently you'll have to water it. The smaller the pot, you might have to water it uh, a little bit more than these larger ones, but just pay attention to the leaves. For soil, like in today's video, I would only recommend using something that is extremely well draining, something that doesn't clump up or hold on to moisture too long. So like a cactus and succulent mix. What makes this different from other potting soil is that there is a higher content of sand in here. You might not actually be able to feel it or actually see it, but um, sometimes in, I guess, some brands of uh, succulent cactus soil, it's probably like 50% sand, uh, some peat moss, I think, and then some perlite. Jades or succulents are extremely easy to care for as long as you give them what they want. Okay, so here is the finished product. I think it looks great in this new terracotta pot. I always love the color contrast between the green and the orange pot. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. I just wanted to take kind of a zoomed out look here as well. I do plan on putting up some plant shelves up top here. I bought a couple IKEA lamps with some grow bulbs and uh, this Brazil will eventually be on the plant shelf kind of cascading down. So that's kind of the uh, future projects, I guess for the channel is putting up some shelves and uh, filling it up with some plants. So that's gonna be pretty much it for today's repotting video. If you enjoyed this type of content, please like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Share it on Facebook. Uh, all your support is greatly appreciated. My channel is coming up on 16,000 uh, subscribers now. So I really appreciate each and every one of you. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Take care, bye.